Alright, uh, first thing we're going to work on is uh, we're going to create a custom brush for uh, the detail scratches and the and the, the multiple layers of, of what we're going to do. We're going to have to create a custom brush because otherwise the other ones really just don't cut it. So uh, we're going to start first by opening all our things that we're going to need here. Okay, so uh, all right, here's what's going to happen here. I have my UV template and everything paired. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a brush. I'm going to make it 256 by 256 with a resolution of 72. All right, it's pretty small, but it's just a brush, so. All right, here's what I'm going to do. The brush is going to be detail scratchy, so I have to sort of a very yeah there we go let's do this type of thing Oop. my bad mm. gonna go ahead and hit a F on the thing here hitting F will change your canvas to different types if you hit F once it makes it a single canvas if you want to move your well I can't move it because it's small but you know if you have to, you hold down space bar and click your left mouse button. I'll just go ahead and get some deeper scratches in here. I mean, it uh, just depends on what you're going to be doing. You're, you're going to need to create multiple different... Like, here's a custom brush I made. It's really helpful. You're gonna wanna, if you want to, you can adjust your dynamics. I always do scattering and shape dynamics. Scatter that a little bit. Up the count. Change the shape dynamics. Adjust size. Minimum diameter. Just the roundness and angle jitter. There we go. That'll create a much better looking. Okay, that'll probably do. All right. Um, give me a second. I have to remember how to do this. All right. You have to define brush preset. It's an edit. Define brush preset. We're gonna name this brush Scratch Detail. All right. So here's the brush. Now you have a brush to use. It's gonna be in your brushes all the way at the bottom. It should be anyway. Let me get back to my normal brush tab hassle. Alright, see it'll be at the bottom. Alright, and this is gonna be there whenever you need it. So it's just the scattering and the shape dynamics like I did before. Let me adjust this so a little more. We're gonna wanna have it a little more linear. noise on there. Like that. That ought to be good. Mm, too much. Eh. Just gotta play around with it until you get something you like. Okay. Alright, now let's uh, hit F so you can get back to the way things were before a couple times. We can go ahead and close that out since we have the brush saved. Alright, um, we're going to have our main body here, this body texture. Actually, I'm going to stop recording right now because that's the... Okay, we are going to now start working with layer painting and masking. You have your mane here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the UV for that I did for this. I redid it a little bit. You're going to... Here we go. Alright. 
we are going to copy and paste this over and put it on screen. <clears throat> this will give us a, a guide to work off of. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create another layer. New layer. On this layer, go ahead and get rid of these so I can see what I'm doing. On this layer, I'm going to make a what's called a mask layer for painting. I'm going to go ahead and try to mix this up a little bit. Probably right about there would fit best. Paste another. Take this and rotate. There we go. I like working that way better. Now let's rotate that. Alright, we're going to merge these layers together. <clears throat> okay. Now we're just going to run a quick seams. I'm get rid of some of these seams. Sorry, it's going to be a little slower because, uh, oopsie, I am recording at the same time. That's why you got to do this in smaller increments. Big increments almost always mess up whenever you have a white background. Okay. Don't want any of this stuff. Wow, this this side just doesn't really want to do it what I want it to. Damn. Okay. Get rid of that. I should probably have used the clone tool. Get far less of these blurry errors in it. Okay. I've got the general seam and some other repetitive look out. No, I, I may have to change the scale on this. It's it just depends. I, I, the scale is probably going to be too big. But okay, so here's what's going to happen here. What we're going to do? Okay, we are going to tie this layer to this layer, and we are going to apply a mask. You hit this little button right here. All right we are going to paint it full of black which basically means and if you need to see your notice that it's painted here but if you want to see your layer hold down alt click on it and you'll be able to see your actual alpha Okay. actually I'm going to take that off there for a second alright now what's going to happen here is um, this shows the the alpha show visibility of this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to editing this we go ahead and name that um, base metal and keep I like to keep my naming oh yeah and when when possible create a main layer this unlocks this layer and then what you can do is you can just duplicate it and then this layer can be main layer paint I, I use I accidentally inverted this. So I'm going to need to rotate 180 degrees. There we go. Now I have it correct. So now I can see what I was painting on. Whoopsie. So that's up top. File, save. It's the only problem with this is you end up having to redo some stuff. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So actually, as it turns out, I'm painting up here. There's my painting right there. Check my detail here. I'm going to need to be less blurred. I need to have more hard edges on this because metal doesn't blur like that. Alright. Go ahead and 
and change it so it's not so blurry. Oops, wrong layer. Got to make sure you're painting on the mask. Otherwise, it's just going to be funky. Alright. Pretty much this entire thing is going to be like that. If you want, you can uh, go to your pencil brush. Go ahead and go to this. It's going to make it really, really, if not maybe a little too hard. Yeah, so that makes it just a little too hard. Depends on what ends up looking better. Just go ahead and save this out and see what happens. Put it in a few other places just for reference. Yeah, that one looks a little bit more like scratches, but it's still its not quite what I need here. It's not going to look as good if I have it like that. Go ahead and turn the UV shell off. Well, first I'm going to have to do this. Alright, that's good enough. Turn that off. I mean, you're gonna, it's gonna, obviously, it's gonna require more time. I'm trying to sort of rush this here. Oop, paint on that. In fact, you might even benefit from doing, let's see, you might even benefit from doing something more like this, because scratches will have a lot more edges like that. And if you don't have a tablet, I, I mean, I'm not using my tablet right now, but that will help you with your realism value like that this is a little extreme if and if you need to uh, uh you know erase anything all you have to do is paint black so if i want to try to add in a little m more uh variation cuz obviously it's not going to be you know let's go ahead and take this brush and clear it out a little bit I like working in F. I just find it easier to maneuver around with it. Let's go ahead and take you and put you around here. Yeah, there we go. Like I said, it just depends on what your brushes look like. You're going to want to use a combination of all of them, more likely than not. Change over to white. There we go. You can also do a dual brush. Sometimes what helps with that is if you if you uh, bring out your brushes. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna tie that into there. I don't mind a smaller workspace in, in this regard, because uh, it's a lot easier for me to find all my tools. If you want, you can put on a dual brush, and then you can select your other scratches brush. You can select any of them, but uh, pick this one. And it'll be a combination of both brushes. Gets you a slightly more realistic look. Okay, I'll zoom out. Turn my UV back on, see what's going on. Alright, this is going to be interesting. Um, these right here, this is the very top. And um, my guess would be that this area right in here would receive a, quite a bit of wear and tear. Change the flow so it's not so flowy. 
try adding in just a little bit to blend in that that shape. It's probably way too wide. Blend in that. And yeah, it's up to the artist. Like I said, I'm really rushing things. I mean, normally you wouldn't be going this fast. I would have spent more time making my brushes and whatnot. But and obviously this isn't the best quality texture either. But to be honest, once it's in the game, it's gonna look better once you put all the other maps on it. You can detail it. That saving process. Is let me go ahead and get rid of the UV before I save. Control S is to save. Alright. Check it out. Get rid of that UV so I can look at this without it. Alright, now if you see what that's doing, I mean, that's going to be, if you do it right, it's really going to add a lot. And once I add all the other elements, like the decal for this, uh, let me go ahead and do that now. That's a part of this. I have a decal here that I'm going to use. Hit F to uh, go back to this area here. I'm going to go close this out since I don't need it. Go ahead and take you down. Close out all the stuff I don't need. Alright, this decal, I'm going to control C. Now this is quite small decal. This is just a basic one. You're going to need something higher res, I believe, if you're going to, you know. Alright. Let's go ahead and maximize this. Photoshop degrades the UV. Alright. Right here is the where the glass begins. I want to put this right under the lip. So probably right about there. And you you know you are gonna need to, to do some adjustment. We're gonna go ahead and put this right there. And you're going to adjust the the way that oop, I totally forgot to save the transformation. Okay. Find something that works. This looks like it's going to work well. Change the fill so it's a lighter. All right. Do it. And this is a separate layer, so you can work on it. So for instance, I'm going to take my blur tool to get rid of that hard edge right there. Put the strength up to maximum. You just blur that hard edge in there just a little bit. This way, no matter what, you don't get some weird, funky looking hard edge. Okay. Alright, let's take that out and save it. Save as. Hopefully I picked the right one. I went up just a little too high, but as you can see, it worked. So this is what it's really going to look like whenever you, you know. And this thing will seriously start picking up, man. I mean, like, uh, you'll see, because I'm going to stop in this video now. You've learned everything you need to do to your, do it yourself. I'm just going to do it and then start recording off when I'm done. Okay? This has uh, hopefully been useful.